Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Minwi Maitri. Dharma and Sangha, until I reach full enlightenment. Enthused by wisdom and compassion, today in the Buddha's presence, I generate the mind for full awakening for the benefit of all sentient beings. As long as space remains, as long as sentient beings remain, until then, may I too remain and dispel the miseries of the world. This is a synopsis of the Bodhicitta prayer um, by Shantideva. And, and um, when I conduct my personal practice, uh, if I'm going to do anything besides meditation, I always begin by reciting that prayer um, because it's my intent to set my mind um, so that I hopefully can um, better practice that bodhicitta spirit that, um, that we all try to aim for. So a couple of weeks ago, Unsan asked us, he said, uh, so starting in September, I want you guys to take a sutra and uh, take a portion of it and talk about what's important to you. Don't put any research into it or make it formal. Just, you know, tell us why it's important to you. And uh, so I'm going to jump the gun a little bit this week and start now. Uh, only because I, I had an experience this last week reading a sutra that I read quite regularly. Um, and it struck me very clearly uh, as something I think I always need to hear. And that is a feeling of non-discrimination, um, non-differentiation. So I'm going to change my background for just one second here, if you'll bear with me. I didn't want to keep it up the whole time because it's a little annoying. Um, but if you see this now, I think I may have showed this to you before. There's all these balls behind me in my background, and they appear to all be different colors. And yet the reality is, it's only our brain telling us they're different colors. The balls are all gray. But some of them have green lines in front of them. Some of them have red lines in front of them. Some of them have bluish lines in front of them. And our brain tells us that's what color the ball is. But it's not. They're all the same. Our eyes lead us to discriminate sometimes. And maybe we take preferences. Oh, I like the red ball better than the green ball. Oh, no, I like the bluish gray ball better. Whatever. But we discriminate. And it's natural. Our brains are wired to do that. We are wired to see things as different rather than see things that are the same. And yet we, as practitioners of the way, try to train ourselves not to discriminate. So it's a tradition in, um, in the ordained uh, Sangha since the times of the Buddha that the precepts are chanted or read or reviewed uh, with the body of, of, uh, of other ordained Sangha members uh, fortnightly to remind us of the precepts that we take. And this was important in the time of the Buddha and I think it's important to us now. But it was important to the, in the time of the Buddha because when the Buddha, and I'm talking about the historical Buddha, Shakyamuni Buddha, um, when he was alive, he, of course he didn't call what we call Buddhism, Buddhism, not at all. He called it the Dhamma Vinaya. 
um, that was the name of the order that he founded. The, uh, for lack of a better word, the religion that he founded. Um, the Dhammavinya. Dhamma or Dharma is, is the Sanskrit word, uh, meaning it could have probably three different meanings. It could either be truth, it could either be teaching, or it could be law. Uh, but Vinaya is more direct. It's just discipline. Um, and so an important part of his teachings were that we have to be disciplined in how we live our lives uh, so that we can better um, understand the way, the Buddha way, uh, so that we can achieve our own awakening. Now, this came to have a couple of different meanings uh, as, as uh, the Buddha reached his uh, Parinibbana and Buddhism spread to the east and Mahayanism uh, grew out of, um, and, and, and Theravadan grew out of his original teachings. And, you know, they kind of went their separate ways in a lot of ways. Um, but what struck me was I was reading this last week, as I try to do regularly, I was reading uh, from the Brahma's Net Sutra, uh, sometimes called the Brahma Jala Sutra. Uh, in the second part of the Brahma of the Mahayana Brahma Jala Sutra is the precepts for, the, for what we call Bodhisattva precepts, the Brahma Jala monk precepts, whatever. Um, and these are the 58 precepts uh, of a fully ordained, in our tradition, Zen priest. And these 58 precepts are considered the 10, uh, the 10 major precepts and the 48 minor precepts. Where am I going with this? Where I'm going with this is, um, so as I was reading these this last week, and I'm probably not as good as doing this fortnightly as a uh, uh, as someone might be doing if they lived in a monastery. Um, but I was reading number 40, which is like technically number 50, because it's number 40 of the minor precepts. And it struck me as the epitome of this bodhicitta spirit, of non-discrimination. And I want to share that with you today. It's not very long. Um, and I just want to tell you that it's something that I felt, I felt like maybe all my life it's something I needed to work at, which was to accept people as they are. Different? Are they different? Or are they like those balls that I showed you previously? Are they all really just the same, just like me? But maybe my eyes, my brain, something has drawn lines in front of them and told me they're different. So here's the 40th precept of the minor precepts, like I said, or the 50th precept of all 58. Do not err in terms of who can be taught. The Buddha said, my disciples, you should not discriminate when conferring the precepts on people, whether they are kings, princes, senior ministers, or government officials, monks, nuns, male and female lay believers, libertines or prostitutes, whether they are celestials of the 18 Brahma heavens or celestial children of the six heavens of desire, whether they are sexless or hermaphrodites, eunuchs or slaves, or disembodied spirits, all should be able to receive the precepts. Those who would confer the precepts, precepts and then it goes on to say they should wear monastic garb and set themselves apart separately. Um, when someone wishes to receive the precepts, the preceptor should inquire, in this life, have you ever committed one of the seven heinous acts? And it gets very specific. And everyone and anyone else can receive the precepts. And it goes like this. The seven heinous acts are wounding a Buddha, killing one's father or mother, killing one's teacher, killing one's preceptor, disrupting the Sangha, and killing an Arhat. 
If someone has committed any of these seven heinous acts, he or she cannot receive the precepts in this lifetime. Anyone else can receive the precepts. How enlightened this is. And I mean that because whether or not you want to accept this as a, as a sutra given by Shakyamuni Buddha at the time of uh, his living, uh, all indicators are it probably wasn't. It was uh, probably drafted in China around 200 uh, of the common era. And yet, they realized at the time the Dharma and the precepts should be available to everyone. Everyone. Now that's a, that's a major redirection from where the uh, Theravada tradition uh, of ordinations went. And in the Theravada tradition, they were very specific. Basically, if you were not cis male or cis female, you couldn't get the you couldn't be ordained. Period. And yet we're talking 1,800 years ago or so in China, they realized that the Bodhisattva way was that the Dharma and ordination was available to everyone. We live in a society today that often discriminates we discriminate based off of sexual orientation or identity. Um, we discriminate based on gender, based on race, based on any number of things that we look at the balls and think that person must be different from me. And yet it's just colored lines making our brains think they're different when in reality they're all the same so when i read and recite usually on a monthly basis i'm not so good at doing it on a fortnightly basis but when i read and recite the uh the precepts that I've taken, I try to remember that. Then we stop looking at people with colored lines in front of them. Stop labeling and start accepting everyone as being just the same as me and just the same as you. <laughs>